How's it going guys? Trey Clark here as I usually am. We jump right into this as I usually do. So Simon Dan uh, is doing what he's supposed to be doing. Okay? We've had he's made fun of my videos and I kind of baited him a little bit on this. And what I baited him on was not to just sing a, a silly song, let me fix this, but to set him up. And so what we've set him up for is he is going to have to explain something that's tangible and it's not math, maps, with maps. Okay, so there's no T's and crumpets involved. You actually have to tangible, I don't, are T's and crumpets real? If they're real, then it, my apologies. So, my, uh, vid my original video that he made fun of, rightly so, I did the math incorrectly. What I should have done is gone 0.99 lumens to the moon instead of one because there are a few places in math that uh, that get you backwards. Like if you try and square three and then reverse it, that type of thing. But uh, if if it was 0.99 lumens, which one lumen versus two lumens in the inverse squared law, one lumen is not really that much observably different than two lumens. Uh, you, you might not even notice it without a, some sort of meter. So the moon is full, roughly one lumen. Now what you should be using is a lux kind of the same thing but as you get closer you have to go per square meter and Simon Dan thinks I'm a retard and he says as much and I acted like one. Uh, was it on purpose? You'll find out. But as you get closer obviously the inverse squared law does not work with brightness the way it does with energy. It can't. Even if it does on paper, it can't work. It can't be infinitely brighter as you move in, right? It just can't. Otherwise, everything would blind you all the time, no matter what, uh, once you reach the surface. So obviously, I was being a little coy there. And uh, so Bob from Globusters is actually using the right, uh, Sorry. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Bob from, that was, oh, from Sushi. Uh, Bob from Globe Rust Busters is uh, using actually the right math, which is nonsensical. He chimed in and said it's like this astronomical number of how bright the moon is compared to our vision of it from here. It, it quadrillions or something like that. I didn't even really do the math. But no one else would either. Everyone's just like, you're an idiot, you're stupid, you're this, you're that. And I'm like, what's your number? How many lumens is the moon? First of all, it's the wrong question. How many lux is the moon? And the reason is not so you can adjust your eyes or your helmet, it's so you can use the Hasselblad camera, okay? Now, am I a physicist? No. Am I a photographer? Yes. So, Simon Dan is going to have to match up the idea. Drink this in. Drink this in. Match up the idea that his number of 1,000, what was it? 1,024 lumens, which is really not that astronomical, okay? from him doing the math, 1,024 lumens, is gonna work on the Hasselblad camera with an f-stop at 5.6. No, it's not gonna work. Will not work, no way. Then you add, well, okay, let's say we, we put it to the test and we knew what, exactly what it was gonna be even though we'd never been to the moon we have never been 250,000 miles, 239,000 miles out. Never done that. Then we're gonna put a bunch of military pilots on the tin can, shoot them out there, 
at uh, whatever speed, 70, I don't know if they traveled 17,500 miles, but uh, that's the orbit speed. So the chest mounted, it shoots like this, okay? That's important. It's here. You can't look down. You've got a visor here. you got a helmet. you got all these things working against you. Then you've got gloves. I've done another video. I'll attach the link to it, but YouTube doesn't let me attach links to myself, so I don't know how that works. Uh, and then there's no viewfinder. And we get these beautiful pictures on the moon in situations no one has ever been in from military pilots, not, I mean, you would be, you would be winning the lottery if you got one picture from an experienced photographer with just some general information. Okay, so, but it, it can't be the, what Bob and I were saying, Bob from Globebusters, or what I was saying on one of the videos, that it's infinitely brighter in, in a, uh, you know, the closer you get to it. It just can't be that. It's not a physical reality. But it is a reality that light shines from the moon to us through a vacuum. The way they explain that is that it's both a wave that can't travel through a vacuum, but when you don't look at it in some kind of stupid double slit experiment and you get on the, the quantum level, it turns into a, a particle. How does that happen? You observe it, it's a particle. You don't observe it, it's a wave, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. It's stupid, it's a lie. It's just a, a reason to say, well, I don't know, we need some more grant money to search into it. So what Simon Dan is saying, first of all, he's saying I'm an idiot, which I am in a lot of areas, but not this, especially not photography. It, what Simon Dan is saying is that you can send a guy on a rocket through the Van Allen belts, this is gonna get crazy. I'm, think about it. the likelihood of all these things bringing back these beautiful pictures to your coffee table. A military pilot, right, with a chest mounted camera, you land, you do all that stuff, with enough film, I'll let you do the own, your, your own weight, just the weight of the amount of film to take how many pictures? One every nine seconds is the best average I can get. You can stretch it out to one every 30 seconds over three days. Three days, let's call it, let's split the difference. Let's call it one every 15 seconds. One picture every 15 seconds for three straight days. Now we know they went into the lunar capsule, so you gotta dumb it down to seconds like this, not being able to look at it, the aperture, you've got mittens on, three sets of mittens, the visor in the worst, you know, atmosphere that we've never been to before, right? You can't even look down and see what you're, it's not like I'm looking at myself right now in this, you're just taking pictures, you're hoping it's right. And they're from distance to here and all this kind of stuff. The camera, the Hasselblad 500 EL camera, was at an f-stop of 5.6. So, Simon Dan, I challenge you to put on mittens. Now, first time, you don't get to jack with it for six months. I challenge you, put on mittens, a, bike, a motorcycle helmet, whatever, and just walk out to the beach. You obviously have never been to the beach. I can, I've seen your videos. But if you ever decide to get outside instead of wear your shawl, just jack with the aperture and see what kind of pictures you take. I'm a very experienced photographer. It is a, it's a trigger gun. Now they did adjust it for only one thing, is just for uh, basically the coldness of space, which is, by the way, plus 250 and minus 250 degrees but they did let the, the, the mittens squeeze in here. So I'm taking a picture of myself right now. I'm speaking louder. I don't know how this directional mic works. And I'm doing this, and I'm taking pictures that end up on Time Magazine, on the moon, from a military pilot. Eh? Eh? 
I have to adjust the aperture, nothing. The EL is electric, but all it means is it forwards the, the, uh, uh, the film, okay? So if it change film, think of, I think it's 30 exposures I think it's 30. It's somewhere in there between 30 and 45, but I think it's 30. Uh, exposures, one every 15 seconds for three days. What is the weight alone of that film? Much less getting through radiation, much less changing it with mittens, much less adjusting the exposure, much less adjusting the shutter speed. Everything's manual. This was long before you could just hit auto manual auto okay it doesn't work and that's what i was setting simon dan up for the math was wrong absolutely so now simon dan has said the number 1024 lumens so now we're going to match up 1024 lumens which means one lumen is how bright it is when i'm taking a picture of it from here 1024 lumens is when you're standing on the ground basically if you're on the ground but we'll call it 1023 lumens we'll give them a break so we'll see how smug Simon Dan is when he has to start matching up the camera to his number his number 1024 lumens at a 5.6 f-stop of the Hasselblad 500 EL I've got one in storage and I can't friggin find it and I've ordered another one and it hasn't come yet but we're gonna recreate this stuff and uh, I like that Simon Dan is trying to educate and he's not wrong about he's not just a shill I don't believe he's doing anything but doing what he thinks is helpful uh, but he's a little too smug and smugness is not a virtue my friend Simon We'll see you soon. Cheers.